Hi there, welcome to this video. Uh, it's not part of a sequence, a bit of a standalone video. Um, normally mine are a sequence of videos showing you how to build a profile for a particular aircraft and I'm not really at the moment going to build the whole profile for the TBM 930, much as I enjoy the aircraft. Um, I've got a few others that I will use more often that I want to uh, do videos about. Uh, my, pre my recent videos are uh, because I've got uh, a honeycomb yoke and throttle quadrant and I'm converting uh, my existing profiles to make better use of the hardware that I've got. So this one is specifically about the TBM 930 and a three position switch on the stream deck. And the reason I'm doing it is that I had a request from somebody who'd been uh, watching my videos and um, said that I haven't yet dealt with a three position switch and they were trying to get one working uh, on the CBM 930 and gave a few examples of how many there were and uh, just couldn't get it working and it actually turns out that they downloaded a profile from the internet and hadn't installed it correctly um, and I thought not quite sure how to support them that uh, I remember uh, downloading a, a one very early on when I uh, was just getting into uh, using axes and O's downloading one and realizing how complex it was if I show you what we had in the past uh, if I bring in axes and O's um, it's um, it relied on us accessing the B variables by mapping L vars to B vars. We couldn't have direct access to them. And you see that actually that, that this method is now um, deprecated. It, it's allowed, but it's not the advised way of doing things. And if I look at how complex it was back then, uh, very briefly, because I'm not going to go into this, but I, I thought if this is where he's having problems, trying to explain this, um, it's just beyond help really um, but you had to build a profile mapping various variables to the B variables and actually finding these um, was really hard um, so you built a profile for, for the aircraft and you had to uh, then enable a hook I never really quite understood what the hook was about um, then you had to allocate that profile at TBM to a particular aircraft and I had it linked to the the main uh, master profile for the TBM 930. I'm using this livery here for my development work and I've not mapped it to that so I know that I'm not getting any um, help or interference from those mappings. Anyway, more of that later. Um, you had to get that working, you had to download scripts and, and uh, um, run these scripts and the TBM 90 had loads of scripts, mostly trying to get over the different positions of different switches, um, these multiple switches. And the scripting was really quite, I mean, beautifully written. It worked very well, very efficient. But trying to break this down and explain it um, to someone if that's where their problem was. Or, or they want to build their own, um, explaining how this system worked and one script calling another that was too complex. Anyway, before I got into to actually starting to explain and help, he said he got it working, but he then said, sort of a challenge, is there a way of doing this with a stream deck with a single button? Yeah, I think there is, um, without scripting. Ooh, not sure about that, but um, I'll give it a go. I'll, I'll, I'll take that as a challenge uh, because we've got much better act access to the BVARs now. We can see them in the software development kit much better and the tools available to us in Axis and O's are hugely developed, more developed now. So there probably is a way of getting into this. Um, so let me take you on a bit of a journey and explain uh, sort of where I, where I was going with this and how I got this to work. So I'm choosing this one here, this three position light switch where it goes to taxi and or landing and dig into how we can get that to work. So the first thing we need to do, well, we could use axes and O's and go hunting for variables um, and see what's there. And 
we also need to look at Stream Deck and what that provides to us. The basic tools in the Stream Deck are pretty much no use to us. They they don't allow us to do more uh, more than press a button, and it's almost simulating pressing a key on the on the keyboard. Um, the tools that uh, come with, from Lorby's work much more sophisticated. Um, we've got toggles, on offs, but these are again really just two way switches. Um, events or one off presses so there's not much uh, there in terms of three ways so we're gonna have to do some work behind the scenes to make it work as a three position switch e even when you think about it the um, if you look at any of the graphics uh, if you put a toggle in here they're really a two position graphics that's on off or you put your own graphic in there and it's on off We've got better um, access to the graphics here with uh, gauges, so there are things we can do if we want to make it visually quite good. But behind there is pretty much the same functionality as behind here, just with graphics capabilities on top. So let's see where we can go with this. Let's get rid of that and start working. Well, my first port of call is uh, looking at the tools we've got in the software development kit, the 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 work up here in develop in the developers mode, and in behaviors, we need to make sure that we're loading the right file. But standard, it will come up with the TBM ninety uh, file. We want the ex interior one loaded, and behaviors isn't going to give us very much. There's not much in there for us, so we need to look at the input events. And it's in the sort of lighting area here, and it's this lighting landing one that's of interest to us. We've got here some um, events and well, rare, they're actually variables. The that we've got that won't appear if you do a search in axes and O's because um, that really knows about the L vars. Um, as standard, if I bring access and those back into it, if we go in here and start uh, hunting out uh, sim events or sim variables, let's look for the landing one. Let's click landing. Uh, these are the events we've got, and these are landing light on, off, um, or set, or toggle, and it's not lighting landing; it's landing light, so that they're diff they're named differently. Um, even the key events, same um, key landing lights toggle. So that's no use to us. And if we go and search for a variable, again, let's look for a, a landing variable. They're the ones uh, traditionally in the older aircraft, the AVARs, we, we could um, access. Um, but it, that's not where we want to be. We want to be looking at this here, because these ones here will are, are kind of higher in the high up the hierarchy and affect these ones here. So that's where we want to be looking. So first thing to do is to start watching the variables. We'll we'll, we'll watch these simulator variables, and the first one to look at is what's happening here with the BVAR which we do have to type in we have no way of getting access to it otherwise um, lighting landing one and we'll add that to our watch list and it's found a value two already, so it's actually we know it's found something. What we're going to do also is to put in the um, state of the landing light and the taxi light, so we can actually select those because those are the normal um, AVARs that we can put in. So we can put those in, and I'm going to look at the state of the landing light. So we'll add that, and we we'll select the taxi variable as well. The same thing, the taxi light state, and add that. So let's uh, 
clear things up a little bit and have a look what's going on. So I'm going to move this switch here and we'll see what effect that has on here. So if I move it to taxi, you can see that that is now uh, position one for the lighting landing. And the taxi light is apparently on, the landing light is off. And let's move it up to the top position. That's, that's state zero as far as this um, variable is concerned. And this time the landing light is on and the taxi light is off. So that matches the switch. So straight away that's looking pretty interesting. That this state here controls the state of those lights. And that's really what we're trying to achieve straight away. So what I wanted to do then was to use my Stream Deck to put uh, some events in place. Um, I've got them preloaded here so that you can, it's, it's quicker than me typing them in again. But let's have a look at this, the, these. These are just ordinary event buttons, I just pull one across. And I've called that landing lights. So I'm affecting the B variable. This is why it's nice now, we can actually write straight to the B vars. Um, landing light one set. So I'm using this one here, I'm setting a particular value in and can you do you do need to type them into um, the stream there's no clever cutting and pasting I'm afraid and I'm sending the value zero and I've left it repeating it doesn't really matter and there's nothing else in there that I've done so you put it in here that piece of text is just to remind me I'm sending a, a zero to the landing light switch and you must click, click, click submit when you've t uh, put those variables in. So that's what you need to do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, on my actual stream deck, I'm going to press, if I try and cite this stuff, I'm going to press this one here. So it's going to send a value zero to the switch. So I'm pressing the button now, which you can't see, I'm afraid, but uh, believe me, I've done it. And you can see that it's put the switch into zero. It's reading zero there landing lights will be on and the taxi lights will be off. If I press this one it's the same thing but I'm sending the value 1 this time so it should switch it to taxi which it does and it's turned the landing lights off, turned the taxi lights on and if I send 2 it does what you'd expect position to is both of them off and it's at the bottom so that's two one zero strange way of doing it but it, that's how it's programmed so that really makes me think we've got a way forward um, but I'm using three buttons at the moment so back in that behaviors dialog here there is also the increment and decrement version which means I can step through I can step from two to one to zero using the decrease button or the increase going in the opposite direction. What I wanted to check was that if we carry on decreasing, does it stop at zero or does it go beyond that? Because with the A vars, you had to be careful that you could go um, below zero and it didn't make any sense. And in fact, you could cause all sorts of uh, weird effects by doing it. And same with the increment that the, the top value is clearly two. Um, but if you incremented it using a script on the AVARs, you could go beyond uh, the maximum limit of two. I um, want to avoid that. So what I did on the Stream Deck, let's bring Stream Deck back in. Let's shrink that down. Stream Deck back in. Um, I've put a button here which now calls the um, decrease, the decrement uh, version. You have to put a value in here of, of one. It doesn't really, actually, I don't think it matters what it is, but it needs a value. Um, or the increment one, um, again, with a value of one. There's nothing else in there. Um, so this is already starting at two. So I'm going to do, put the, press the decrease button and make sure that it doesn't go beyond zero. So I press the decrease button once and it goes from two to one. Press it again, it goes from one to zero. And press it again and it's not causing any harm. So I can use that as much as I like to, to move from one to the other without any worry. And I'll do the same here for the increase button. 
I've pressed that on the actual stream deck it should go from 0 to 1 to position 2 position 2 being everything switched off so that looks like we've really got some good progress going so how to bring it down to a single button that was the next thing so this button here again it's programmed it's just an event button and I'm going to make sure that it's not repeating so that when I press the button it doesn't go into any kind of repeating mode and I'm going to have it that uh, normally it would be in position 2 so the first action I'm going to want it to do is to decrease it to 1 and decrease it to 0 so that's my normal key press is the, the decrease the decrement 1 not repeating but I want to move it, be able to make it move in the opposite direction to do the increase. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a long press event. So if I hold it down for a little bit longer, it reads it as if I'm going to do an increase. And I'll put it down as half a second. Uh, hold it down for half a second, it should go in the opposite direction. And I've got the auto rate on that. You've only got slow and fast. I kind of wish it was off, but... Um, it's not there so anyway that's going to work for me let's submit that because I did make a change here I've turned that repeat off so now if when I press this button here we should find it moving up one position and up again to the landing if I hold it down for a bit longer the half a second you can see it's moving down so I, I've got a three position switch change And I can go from uh, taxi and I can go back to off again uh, with a long press and a short press. So that works fine. So we, we've done that, we've achieved that. We've got lights working, well, light switch working, um, no script, all on a single button. I was uh, delighted. That looks really interesting. And then comes the but bit. Let's get some power going. Let's move the crash bar and I'm going to put it onto battery so we're in battery lights are on in fact what I'm going to do is I'll make sure that we've uh, definitely got some lights on here I'm going to um, turn on my lab, lab lights my strobe light and if we go and look externally uh, let's go outside and have a look what's going on so this is the problem was that I kind of worked into the evening and I had it set for real time so when I uh, switched on the landing lights I expected to see um, the apron light up and I can see for definite I've got electricity and I can see the nav lights are working so if we go back to the cockpit and I'll switch this now to taxi go back to the external view and there are no lights on nothing was happening well, I know I've got power running in fact let's go back into the cockpit again and we'll switch it to landing lights this time nothing no lights on and it wasn't lighting the apron up so I uh, puzzled um, what was going on and the best thing to do then is to try to look at the events let's go back into the cockpit and have a look at what's going on so I'm going to use axes and O's and this time I'm going to watch the events so not watching variables watching events this time and I'm going to do it live from here it's got some potentiometers that are being constantly sort of refreshed there's something happening here but if I um, move this switch now Let's, let's take it to the off position if I move this to taxi lights you can see here that it's set that potentiometer to which wasn't being set here it's not being constantly refreshed but during that switch here you can see that it's uh, set the landing lights to off taxi lights to on as I wanted it to but the potentiometer 2 has been set 
to 100 and potentiometer 10 has been set to off. Switch it again and you can see the potentiometer has been switched. 2 is off now and 10 is at 100%. We've got no access to potentiometers here. There's no, there is no dimmer switch for um, for the landing lights or the taxi lights. These are on or off. Um, and it's sort of being achieved not only by the switch but by internal logic. Um, flipping these potentiometers on and off. So I don't think that we, I, 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 as far as I can see, that we could just switch them on to a hundred and leave them on because the circuit is is actually engaged or disengaged with this switch here. And I don't think it matters that the potentiometer is up to a hundred percent. So back on Stream Deck, what I've done is I have added a bit of extra script here. It's not a lot, but it's a script now. And I've not written it into um, Axis, Axis and O's script. I've written it directly into um, the Stream Deck here. That when we decrease, when we, whenever we move the switch up, um, it will just set it both potential meters to 100. So it does the landing lighting decrement thing that we wanted to do before, but it also um, turns the potentials or potentiometers on um, it's too complex without using a big script to be to to work out where the switch is and to to switch the potentiometers on and off so I'm just setting to 100 it only really matters the very first time you press the switch and from then on it, it doesn't matter and I'm not putting any switch off the potentiometers anywhere so that's the one script that I've used um, I've got it actually on my PowerPoint because you can't really see the script there so I'll bring it up on my PowerPoint um, so if, I, if I switch to the next slide this is the potentiometer um, there's the um, decrement line. Uh, it, you write, you don't write them on separate lines. You just write it as a continuous piece of script. Um, so set the potential meter ten to one hundred percent, and set potential meter two to one hundred percent, and that's all that's on there as a script. So let's go back to the cockpit, and let's go back to the stream deck. So. I've got that there. That uh, that's the only adjustment. The only change there is between there. Uh, not repeating. Um, I've actually um, gone for four hundred rather than five hundred milliseconds, just so it's a, a, a slightly quicker reacting piece of script. And I'm just going to pr uh, press the button and tell you what I'm doing. So um, let's go with that, and I'll take it to taxi this time. And if we go to look at the external view now. We've got some lights on and if I go back to the cockpit again and press it again just a short press so we take it up to landing we've got brighter lights there the the landing lights working uh, let's take it with a long press that's down to taxi lights and one more long press turns it off so short press on long press long press again takes it off so I've uh, almost done it, I almost rose to the challenge of getting it working on a single button without scripting. It needs a minimum bit of script because of this uh, extra work going on with the potentiometer. Okay, I hope that helps. It gives you an idea of a technique that you can use uh, for other three-way switches. Um, if you don't want to go deeply into scripting but you do have to hunt down the variables um, and the best way to do that is using this behavior debug the tool here and have a, have a look there and see what the inputs are for the various things you want to use okay i hope that's helped and uh, we'll try something else in another video later